welcome to Get Found More Easily on Search Engines, a starter guide for SEO. So it is almost the end of February already, folks, which is kind of crazy, uh, 2023. Uh, and um, so we're going to tackle this subject matter today. Hopefully, um, you guys will learn some stuff. And if you don't, then maybe you can teach me some things. Um, but uh, if you have questions, be sure to drop them in our chat here, and we'll get to those at the end. And if you're watching this later on, you can definitely do that in the comments as well. All right, so let's get it rolling. We'll talk a little bit about us first, because that's fun. So we do partner exclusively with RV Parks, Resorts, and Campgrounds. We're a part of the RVIC community, which is excited to do that. And then uh, we talk about the M5 uh, system, which is an RV park centric marketing system. And as you see here, this little mountain, it, we really focus on those four areas of reputation, resell, reach, and retarget to help build a marketing system for uh, the people we work with. All right. And I am your host, Mark Rowan. Uh, I grew up on a working West Virginia sheep farm slash campground and uh, did study communications. I'm one of the few people in the world, apparently, that studied in school and then end up doing it as a profession. So here you go. You can tell your friends about me. Uh, I did meet my college sweetheart, Jenny, and we got married in October 2000. Um, not at We didn't get married at Liberty, but we met there. I do have four amazing kids, Elena Kay, Cassia, Josiah, and Addie, one doggo, Holly, and uh, my oldest is going to be graduating high school this year. So that's exciting. They're all doing great things. And I have personally been helping a web uh, company with their online presence for more than 20 years. And this uh, agency stuff, we started up in, back in 2014. All right. So what we're going to talk, well, that was about me. Now this is about you, what you're going to leave with today. Hopefully, once again, uh, some stuff that you can utilize. Three areas we're going to cover that's going to talk about improving your search engine presence and your visibility there. Uh, we're going to have some actionable information to leave with today. And of course, if there's any questions, we'll be glad to answer those as well. All right. What's the opportunity here? It's, it's about being seen, making it easier for your guests to find you. That's always a good idea. Uh, you want to attract the right audience. There's lots of different types of parks, campgrounds, but uh, who do you want to show up at your place? can gain the competitive ad advantage uh, in your area and then improve online experience and convert at higher rates as well. And of course, it is a cost-effective uh, activity compared to traditional marketing, whether that be TV or print or even radio, and the measurable results that can be capitalized on. So that's all part of the opportunity today. And if you've been or have seen our webinars before, we always have our nice little broke down RV and we don't want to leave it that way. We want to fix things. So you might've had a website of your dreams, you built it, but they didn't come. And if that's the case, um, we want to try to remedy that, right? And here's some common issues uh, we encounter. Not enough traffic to your site. Everybody wants more traffic typically. Um, I mean, some people may uh, have too much and we're happy for them. Uh, then not having a mobile-friendly site, that's always a, a no-no. Uh, your Google business is not maybe optimized the way it should be and not enough relevant content on the site. And then no actual strategy to target the right guests. And then you're not actually tracking or analyzing uh, what you're doing. So we're going to avoid all of those things and we'll address some of that today. Okie doke. Why do we actually care about search engines? I think we're all pretty aware of them today. We'll touch on a couple of things, but it uh, shouldn't be a surprise that it is a primary way that people are discovering their, whether it's they're researching the products or service or your parks, it's the way to go online, right? And in order to be found, you got to make sure that that website is optimized for these search engines. And they are constantly being updated, they're evolving. So for on our end and for you guys, staying up to date is a huge part of it all. And the local search is also big. Uh, so you got to optimize for those local queries as well. And it, so SEO is just one of the elements of a well-balanced digital strategy. So 
that can include social video, email ads, other things as well. Um, but, you know, we definitely suggest being involved, all those in some level. So here's some stats to back up why we're talking about this. 75% of users never scroll past the first page of search results. You might be aware of this because you probably never do that when you search for things. So that's the reality. We got to get a little bit higher up for people to find us through organic searches. And SEO will drive a thousand percent more traffic than organic social media. Now, let it be said that we are actually proponents of social media. We help people with that too. It's a part of the package, right? But when it comes to what do you want to prioritize, uh, you might want to think about this. And 93% of all web traffic is via the search engine. And then when you look at um, <clears throat> how much traffic comes in, it's uh, 53, over 50%, right, of the organic search come to your site. And then this is a great stat as well, 14.6 close rate for any SEO leads. Um, for people that have been in sales, you know, closing 14.6 is a pretty good clip for people that maybe don't know you at all. Obviously, the reason being is that you have formulated your site in such a way that when people search for what they're looking for, they find you. And that means they're ready to take action, hopefully booking a spot or doing whatever with your part. And 40%, 46% of these searches are related to local. So whether it's someone in your area that's going to come hang for the weekend, uh, in that case, or someone that's traveling to your area or through it, those are all related to local uh, searches. All right, so we're going to talk about three areas, understanding the algorithms, optimizing your site, and monitoring and tracking. So let's jump right into the algorithms. We're going to understand a bit about that today. All right, all right. So what are these algorithms that we've all heard about? Unfortunately, they are super complex. So we're not gonna understand everything about them, but we can get a better idea. But they do determine the relevance of and ranking websites in the results. Uh, they take into account a wide range of factors. Some of those include your, the keywords being used, the backlinks to the site. We'll talk more about that. Website structure. We'll talk more about that. Content. We'll talk more about that. So the reality, we're talking about search engines. Generally, Google still controls majority of the search engine market. More than 85% of the people use it to find what they're looking for. So if you optimize for Google, uh, you're doing a pretty good job. Uh, some, some, we didn't put it in this particular um, presentation today, but some of the new news in the search engine world is Bing has incorporated Chat GPT into their search interface, and so that is somewhat of a game changer as well. So they're trying to win back some of that search engine market. We'll see how it goes. So keywords, touch on that for a second. It is a very important factor of the algorithm. Um, so when they type that query in, whatever that keyword phrase is, the search engine is going to try to match what they can find out on the internet with what you typed. So this important part for us to be involved with is researching and choosing the right keywords that are relevant for you and your park and that are being used by those potential customers. So the research portion of it, that's where you're going to understand what's going to be most effective for you personally. So here's some uh, tools that we'll recommend that you can check out. Google Keyword Planner, SEM Rush. There's a couple of places where you can see how many times a keyword is searched for and how much competition there is. So obviously, if there's a lot of competition for a particular keyword, it's going to take longer for you to break forward and the first page results, everybody wants to be on the first page. Uh, and that's how the keyword research is going to help you find out if that's uh, how long potentially. It's going to tell you how long, but if you know there's a lot of competition, you're just going to be in for a little bit longer haul to get it done. You're going to use these tools and identify 
the keywords being used by potential guests to find those parks again. All right. So incorporating these keywords, once you've researched them and found what you need, what you really feel like is going to do your uh, website the right way, um, you're going to want to put them in the right places. So there's the meta tags, there's header tags, and there's your content. So meta and header tags, you are not going to see those uh, on your live website. Your users are not, but the search isn't, isn't the search engine is. And of course, the content is a part that everybody reads. So you're going to also put them on image file names, and the alt tags. Once again, the alt tag is a behind the scenes thing that the engines are going to be able to understand. Uh, even the um, the file names themselves, you people are not going to be, see those things. But importantly, the robots on the internet will. So don't overuse those keywords. Um, keyword stuffing is another term for this. Back in the day, people got away with that. You know, early days of the search engine, the old timey times, um, people just did as many as they could. Now it could hurt your rankings if you try to do that. So be natural uh, when you use keywords on your site. All right, backlinks, get a little into this right now, also known as inbound links. Other websites are linking to your site. Uh, so it's a vote of confidence. That's how search engines see it. And they are factored in to determine where you might be ranked. And according to a recent study, the number of backlinks on a site has the third most important factor in determining where you rank. So it's pretty high up there. I will say as a caveat, these kind of things, um, ranking factors are constantly shifting. Um, We've already kind of alluded to that, um, but I think they always will be pretty important um, in regards to being able to rank well. Building these backlinks, what's that look like? It can be challenging, but there are there are several strategies. Not all of them maybe you would want to use. Uh, guest blogging, broken link building, link bait are all options. It can be kind of very time consuming. It's not like when we talk about SEO, it, it's talking about time investment in general. If you're trying to get leads tomorrow, you want to do a Google ad campaign or another PPC potentially. Uh, so just be aware of what you're getting involved with when it comes to SEO. Uh, high quality backlinks from reputable sites can have a very significant impacts on your search engine rankings. So if you're getting a bunch of sites from like AAA or uh, links from AAA or, you know, some of the big players in the camping industry, that's going to be huge for you. Uh, if they highlight you on, let's say, Woodall's, you know, Campground Magazine, they put a link on their front page. And if it stays there, you know, that's huge. All right. Website structure. Well, these things we're going to get into a little bit more later, too. But these are important factors that also the engines will um, take into account. And so they're trying to provide the users with the most relevant and informative sites. And the structure is what helps them do that. Um, and it, uh, it's a part of the site being structured properly and providing good content. Uh, it's about having clear and simple navigation, responsive design that you know mobile devices uh, will like. And then optimizing content, um, high quality content, informative, relevant. Those are all big parts of doing content the right way. Uh, once again, the natural keywords, make sure they're showing up. And then that's going to look like blog posts, infographics, videos, that you're providing value to your guests. And also it's helping the search and understand that you are a good result for what people are looking for. All right. Our second point today is optimizing your website. We've kind of already dipped our toe into that. Uh, we're going to go a little deeper on page optimization. What is that? You might say it's pretty clear. It's the stuff that you have control of over on your website. So that's going to look like. Let's see, look at the right way, folks, the content. So you have control of your content. You can put whatever you want on there. Once again, we talked about structure, how your site is set up, how you're using your keyword words. So you want to, once again, write that high quality content, providing value, 
using target key keywords. We talked about the images, descriptive file names with the alt tag that include your target keywords. So just kind of reemphasizing these are the kind of everyday things you can do to help be found more easily. Off page, guess what? You do not have control over off page SEO directly. Um, it's going to include things like the backlinks we already mentioned, social media management, brand mentions. So if you participate in online communities, discussion groups that are related to the RV park industry, you can establish yourself as an expert, build that brand awareness. Uh, this particular um, strategy of guest posting is a really good one to go with uh, as far as it's one of the most acceptable ways to do it. You're going to go to other relevant sites. You can provide good content they, they can use. It'll build your brand, establish that credibility, and they can link back to your site. Uh, so guest posting is one of the ways you can really uh, get some mojo on SEO. Technical. So just like it sounds, it is about the technical aspects of ranking. We're talking about your website speed. Slow is bad. Mobile friendly. I think we understand today people are on their phones a lot. Make sure you are serving sites that uh, help people in that manner. Once again, the structure of your site also uh, is important. HTTPS encryption. So we're talking about securing your website to protect user da data. Um, just uh, before we move on to the next thing, they definitely search engines will, you know, maybe potentially penalize you if you do not have a secure website when it comes to search engine results. So if there's two fairly equal results and one's secure and one's not, you know, you could lose out the battle there. The structured data markup is another way that stand out in the um, search results and uh, people can understand what's on your site and improve the appearance. So you've seen these um, probably in your search engine journeys in the past. Uh, it might be something like, um, a, like when someone's you search something and the result comes up and then you see actually uh, maybe a rating that's attached to it or uh, you potentially for in this case maybe have a, a snippet that would allow someone to <clears throat> book directly from the search engine result. So um, those are what we're talking about when we're talking about structured data markup. It really helps you know make your results stand out beyond the other organic search engine results. Improve that website speed. You know, I feel the need, the need for speed. Um, search engines definitely are saying that. They tend to favor websites <clears throat> that load quickly. And that's just about providing a great user experience, correct? And <clears throat> you can compress images. You can minify code. Uh, you can use a content delivery network. You may have heard of Cloudflare. That's a CDN. And uh, that's just another way to deliver your site in a of quicker fashion. Some of these other things, there's tools that you can implement on your site to help do all those uh, things we just mentioned. Minimize HTTP requests. So your website is making requests to the server over and over again. The more of those you have on a site, the longer it's going to take for it to load. So if you don't know what that's all about, you know, we can talk more about that at another time. I'm very glad to do that. But uh, those are things that definitely affect your hosting provider. So the type of plan you have or the type of provider you have can also affect your speed um, and eventually your uh, organic search results as well. We're talking about mobile friendliness again. It's a big part of it because we understand uh, that is about providing a good user experience, and it is a very important part of technical SEO. Uh, it's Your site's going to load faster because it is optimized for mobile devices. Um, you know, I'm, we've all been on sites that are still like old school, and they try to pull them up and read them and all that kind of stuff. It's not good. 
Google in the past few years ago already shifted to mobile first indexing. So they're prioritizing sites that are set up for mobile. And uh, so just be aware of that. Um, if you got, once again, people that you're competing against for that front page and they're already doing this and you're not, um, don't get in the game. And of course, this also helps increase engagement and conversion rates uh, for the mobile visitors. Uh, Google is taking all these things into account when it comes to you know, how you can rank. All right, all right. How do we optimize for this website structure? It's talking about being having clear, organized content that's going to help the search engines understand the purpose and the theme of your site. The search engine crawlers can find and, and crawl your web pages more easily. It makes it um, easier for them to be indexed. And of course, the user experience. That's really what you know, Google and all these massive you know, companies that have thousands of people working for them. You know, yeah, they're trying to make money and they're doing a good job of it, but we're all trusting that they're trying to provide the best possible result for the people out there. And so we should be doing the same thing. Um, and the thing is here, when you're having a better experience, people can stay on the page longer and reduce your bounce rate. So your bounce rate is all about how long someone stays on your site before leaving. So if someone's, if your bounce rate is high, like 80% of the people come to your site, leave uh, within a certain amount of time, like they just basically are on there for a few seconds and leave, you know, Google's tracking all this data. So they know um, that's not a great site to deliver if people don't wanna stay. So all this architecture can really help your relevance and authority. Local SEO, it is a big part of the whole package here. We've talked about this in previous webinars, optimizing your Google business profile. It's part of the Google Maps. It's part of the local pack. When people search, you know, they might say, RV, they might be traveling through the area. What's the RV park near me, right? Those are the things that are going to pop up. They're prime spots that you want to be able to, to take advantage of. Let's talk about, once again, optimizing website for local keywords, you know, using you know, whether it's city names or other attractions, whatever the case may be that's around you, add those in, use them appropriately. Local listings, creating those. Listings in local directories and business listings. So build those local backlinks whenever you can from other businesses in the area, maybe news outlets. Um, you know, if you're doing something new, this would be relevant with news outlets and you want to do a press release, um, then you can get links for that way. And it's a legitimate way to uh, improve your search engine results. Um, so yeah, that's going to just help your authority. This is our final section today, monitoring and tracking, a big piece of making sure you're being successful. Setting measurable goals. This is good for any part of your life, right? You want to make it true with S SEO as well. So uh, you just want to make sure you're tracking your progress and you're measuring the effectiveness of what you're doing. This is in, like it could be, hey, I want to make sure the traffic is increasing because we know what that ultimately means. Uh, we want, obviously, like we'd say in the whole time, we want to make sure our rankings are going up. Uh, we want to increase the number of bookings at our park. Uh, all these things are goals that you could track. The rankings themselves. So you want to see how you're performing. And then also that allows you to identify what you need to improve, right? Um, tools that allow that to happen. Once again, Google Analytics, that is free. Ahrefs, SEMrush, I believe both of those you can start out with a free account um, for the most part. I think you're pretty set on that. Um, and they have a lot of great data that you can input to find out how you can improve your site for SEO. So once you've uh, got that all set up and you begin to analyze that through, for instance, Google Analytics, this free tool, you see how people are interacting with your site. State things like what's getting the most traffic, what keywords are driving, where the, where the people are coming from when they're coming. Those are all great, great data sets that you can get into. That's just a little bit of what you can do. There's a whole lot more 
like I said, it's all free, which is good. When you measure your conversion rates, what's that look like? And so we're looking for how, what specific actions are people taking when they hit your site? And you want to measure that as well. How many bookings are you getting? Are people filling out the contact form? Maybe even a phone call uh, of something of that nature you can also track if you have the right software set up, like the M5. Um, so you can see how effectively that is converting guests in by measuring those rates that you see there. Also, a big part of conversion rates is A-B testing. So you can also uh, have different versions of pages, especially if you're sending uh, traffic to a landing page and you can optimize like a booking landing page, right? And you're wanting to see how much better you can get at converting people, talking about changing your headlines out, the call to action, the layout pictures, all those kind of things. If you are able to do that A-B test functionality, that can really help you learn what works best. Heat maps are a cool thing you could also implement. Um, you can see how people are interacting, which pages, like where they're, how they're interacting on, on an individual page, which links they click, where they spend the most time, and uh, really helps identify where it needs to be improved and to be optimized better. So we talked about it already. These are moving targets. All of us are in this journey when it comes to being optimized. Uh, you, to be in, you want to be informed. It's just changing a lot uh, all the time. Uh, they're updating the algorithms. So you got to test and monitor this stuff. And that analytics tool and the other tools we've mentioned can really help you do all that and identify those areas of improvement. And of course, after you've been informed and you've tested and monitored, you can adapt and adjust. You can update your content maybe. Maybe you need to change your keywords. Let's try out some new SEO techniques that uh, are being implemented other places and maybe you've heard recommendations on as well. We're about to finish up our, our uh, time together here and we wanna go over a couple last things here, common mistakes. You've heard a little bit about these already, keyword stuffing, the idea that you're gonna put as many words that you think people will search for uh, as possible. No, thumbs down. Ignoring the user experience, once again, we don't want to have the high bounce rates. We don't want low engagement or decreased conversion rates. Make sure you could have people that are not super tied into your, because, you know, your website is kind of like your little baby, your little whatever. You see it all the time. Uh, get other people maybe to go through it and see if there's anything annoying or doesn't make sense um, and see how maybe you can improve that way. Poor quality content, that could be not having enough, being like a bare bones site, or just the content itself is not written well, it's not converting people, it's boring, uh, that sort of thing. And not considering that local SEO we talked about, you know, do not forget to optimize your Google business as a part of your overall strategy. And then a part of that too, even with Google business, it all works together is inconsistent business information. Don't want to have that whether your address, you want your address to be the same across everywhere on the internet. Phone number, maybe you've changed it at one point. Once again, make sure it's the same across the board. That can lead not only to confusion to the people that you're trying to uh, have come visit you, but also low rankings. And so on the flip side, what are, what are our best practices for SEO? We talked about it at the beginning. We're finishing at the end. Make sure you're conducting the research that you need to um, so that you can serve the people you need. Claim that business, Google business. We hammer that one a lot because it is a powerful part of uh, your, and it's free. Google, the good thing about Google Analytics, Google Business, uh, Google Search Console, those are all free tools for you to use. Now, whether or not you know how to use them, that's another thing. Uh, talk to uh, Rest and Relax ROI. Um, but yeah, the software itself is good. Now, if you want to do Google ads, guess what? You're going to pay. Uh, publish that high quality content. You know, maybe it's not necessarily doing something like, I need to put something every week. Maybe you spend time and do it once a month and have something really nice to put out that's going to help people. 
Think about how you're going to benefit someone else when you create content. And then once again, the on page, the page titles, the meta descriptions, the headings, the alt tags, some of that is for the end user specifically, and some of it is for the search engines. We talked about the analytics and tracking. Google Analytics, track that website traffic, the user behavior, conversion rates, these are all a big part of it. Google Search Console, I mentioned it just a minute ago. These are two free tools. The console monitors your performance and identify the technical issues that might be going on. So there you have your best practices. And there you have how to get found on search engines. We talked about those at algorithms and the optimization of your site. And we just finished the monitoring and tracking. So at this point, if you guys have any questions, we'd be glad to answer them. Um, thank you for those that are here now and those that are watching later. Obviously, you can always comment. I'm glad to answer any questions you have there as well. And of course, we want people to know that they can connect with us by searching Rest Relax ROI pr pretty much throughout the internet. You will find us. Um, yeah, so Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, glad to connect with you there as well. Next month. I have a question. Hey, man. Hey, how's it going? Uh, this is, uh, I'll, I'll share my screen for a second. I'm just kind of listening and working. Um, but yeah, so really good info. I appreciate it. And I'm just wondering for what you might recommend for someone who may not have much budget right now to do a whole lot, but just, you know, you shared a lot of tips and ideas. We just took over a campground recently. What would you suggest doing your first 30 days, you know, in the business, just trying to get a good uh, baseline in place for, for everything? For marketing in particular? Yeah, um, just for establishing things from the marketing perspective. Yeah, I mean, um, Obviously, you'd have to kind of look at what you have now to understand, but I hammered it a couple of times already. Um, the Google business, um, the one part we didn't really mention, but we've mentioned in previous webinars is, you know, uh, if you're taking over someone else, I don't know if they had a good reputation or not, but um, typically um, that's going to be a huge part of the, the local search results is like how many good reviews can you get? And and also building up that online uh, profile there, like adding photos, adding videos, you know, doing like a essentially like a tour of what you have to offer. Those are all things you can do. Of course, you're going to have your link to your website. Um, like I said, that that is a free service. The other big part about Google business that a lot of people don't do on the regular is you can add posts on a regular basis like it's a social uh, profile. Those are also uh, pieces of how to get found better on the search engine because Google sees those obviously. Um, so those are things I, I always tell any business that we talk with, you know, what's that business profile look like? You know, is it even claimed? <laughs> Some people haven't claimed it. Uh, make sure that after claiming it, optimize it, you know, get as, make sure you're in the right category. That's another big thing. Some people mistakenly put yourself in the wrong category. Uh, and there's other subcategories you can add. Uh, that there's one primary category, and then there's several subcategories. Make sure that primary is the right one. Um, and then, yeah, you just, I, the website is like your, of course, this is what we're talking about next month, right? Creating a website that converts design content functionality. Um, that's the hub of your online marketing. And so, you know, whatever you can begin to do, we kind of touched on some of the things today about making sure that's, uh, SEO friendly um, and with the content and all that. Um, we'll we'll go into more detail on what a website, a good website looks like uh, next month, but I definitely begin to just, you know, add as much relevant, good stuff. Cause people are like, if they're coming into your area, they don't know anything about like, how are they going to find that out? You know, uh, you're going to be able to yeah. serve them with photos and videos, be personal. You know, that's another big thing, you know, make it people want to connect with other people so uh yeah. don't be afraid to you know jump on front of the camera and different things like that to you know, really show the personality of who you are what your business and your park is about cool thanks mark appreciate that
Yeah, so the question here in the chat is, how can you determine what keywords are best for you? So you have to know your business first and foremost, and then who you're trying to attract. And so those two things together, um, like I said, the keyword, Google Keyword Planner, uh, HRS or SEM Rush, um, you can, uh, essentially you can go also and research similar, like I know Westla, you were talking about you're just getting started. So if you know someone in maybe another state or seen another one that's similar to what you're providing, uh, you can put their website in there and do some research too and be like, okay, this is what they're doing. Uh, so some of those tools allow you to do those kind of things too to find out, you know, what uh, similar providers, similar parks are in the middle of doing. So yeah, does that help? All right, we'll just assume that helped. <laughs> All right, so uh, there you go. That is uh, today's webinar. Super glad you guys were able to uh, jump on with us today. Like I said, this next one is going to be deeper dive into what it looks like to have a good website. And uh, we can keep the conversation going, actually. So if you have other questions and would like to just know more, whether... Uh, you know, Monroe, if you wanted a little bit more detail on some of the things to do, and we could actually look at your site, obviously, we'd love to do that. Uh, you can go to book.restrelaxroi.com. Find a time that works for you. Be glad to chat with anybody, anytime. We like doing that. All right, everybody. Uh, we really appreciate you being here. For those that are watching, um, yeah, Wesley, well, last question there was um, not necessarily individual words. They can be phrases. Yeah, keyword, phrase, key phrase, keyword. Uh, obviously, long tail keywords would be like, I'm looking for, you know, park with blah, 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 all these different things, you know, those are easier to get, you know, ranked for, by the way, those long tails. So yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, thanks again. And until next time, happy trails. <laughs>